Oh yeah, so last time we didn't give these videos a, dif- a distinct name, because I-, I-, I gave the conceit that it's still Unearthed Arcana, because these classes were originally an Unearthed Arcana from like, was it a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago? It was a while ago. A while. Uh, these originally. I think they came up together as well. It made, they were very close to each other, because I remember being very, very pleased. Uh, so yeah, we, we did talk about the uh, Oath of Glory, as it's now called, previous video. Go check that one out. It's, it's pretty great. good. Um, and the video both... is right as well. <laughs> the class is cool. Uh, I have occasionally said that these two classes are my favourite, but one of them is much more my favourite than the other. Uh, I wonder which one it is. It's this one. Um, Spoilers. Spoiler. Close the video off now. Don't need to watch yeah. anymore. <laughs> I, I guess we'll say uh, these are both in the... Oh, God. Mythic... Uh, mm, Mythic Odysseys of Theros? Is that the way? You got it right. That's right. Yeah, boy. Yeah, you did it. You're a real magic player now. <laughs> There's a guy at my door with a deck of cards. Oh, 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 it's a mono blue. No magic spells here. Anyways, uh, so yeah, if you want to look at the book, uh, it's on D&D Beyond. I don't. I still think it's not out physically yet, uh, but you can get the subclasses uniquely on D&D Beyond or any of the items, or just a whole book if you want. So that's pretty cool. Link that in the description and stuff. And now we're going to talk about The Bard, the College of Eloquence. And I, 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 I'm going to have to try really hard to not speak for like an hour about... <sighs> About my personal history with Bard, and specifically my history with Bard in uh, Five and Five E, and how I feel about Bard and Five E, and how this fixes all of my issues I had with Bard and Five E. Uh, Sam, you're playing a Bard currently. I well, am so playing we'll, a Bard at we'll, the moment. We'll, we'll, we'll all have things to. We've all played I've, Bards in Fifth Edition. I've, I've played a Bard. Neil, you've played the old version of this Bard, and Sam, you're currently playing a very different Bard. A <laughs> so very this, different Bard. <laughs> <laughs> so this bard. is. Uh, we were just talking about dwarves as well. And spoilers, I drew a dwarf. Nice. I, I drew a dwarf because uh, every now and again we think about the, I think it's the mountain dwarf who gets medium armor and such. And this is another one that Bard only gets medium armor for Valor, I believe. I don't think you can get medium armor mm. any other way. So this is another good class for that dwarf if you're looking to make the most out of your racial bonuses, etc. I, I don't know what the general sentiment about Bard is in the community, but I've always felt that the 5th edition Bard is not the strongest class. No. <laughs> for various reasons. It's very cool. It's got some good stuff. I uh, wrote Jack of All Trades where you get a, a little bit of everything. You can fill the gap in a party decently yep. enough with that, which is nice. Exactly, yeah. So for a small party, especially if, you, if you've got like six people, it kind of gets yeah, it's all not the as useful. skills to get covered. But if mm. you're you know, three or four people, then there's a good chance that they're not going to have religion like as a trained and skill. If you, so if you get like a plus one or two in it, that's better than nothing. You know, it, it kind of, the Bard's like mechanic, the unique mechanic was the, the inspiration die. And yeah. I feel like the inspiration die is really good and really cool, and it's there's not loads of stuff like it in fifth. I mean, you know, there's things like bless, which kind of work very similarly, but that that's their unique thing. And then I think all the colleges have a unique effect on there the on the inspiration die. I believe, yeah. You can do something else with it, yeah. Like the law bard can do the cutting words, I believe, and the valor bard. I think you can add it as damage to an attack. I want to say that's what it is. It adds combat specific combat. Yeah, thing, be- better combat stuff, yeah. It, what, what it always felt like to me was there wasn't a bard bard who was a bard. There wasn't like a generic bard. There was the bard who's a bit of a wizard, like the law bard. And then there was a bard who was kind of a fighter, the valor bard. And then that was it. And then there was a, a couple of clown bards <laughs> just sort of thrown in. <laughs> just a few clowns and then some like... Uh, there, wasn't, yeah. there wasn't just a bard. And then this subclass was made. I was like, oh, nice. It's a bard. It's just a bard. It's just a good bard. It's just a super bard. And I, and I love that. I, I like this bard a lot. And I have played him. A lot of what is this is is that this bard doesn't need an instrument mm. to like still represent him. He he is entirely a character that uses his words. Yeah, yeah, is what I really like about this guy. Unlike many characters, I feel this guy can be played as a pacifist and not ruin your game. I see. I see. Hey. Hmm. Okay. Now I mean that in the perspective. <laughs> I mean that in the perspective <laughs> of. They Nothing. ignore the majority of their own mechanics. I, I don't think you're having a go at me, so that's uh, which is which is good. They all. don't ignore the majority of their own mechanics. Their mechanics are based around basically. You could argue that it's based around looking for an alternative solution to fighting. It is definitely something that they'd be better at. And honestly, I preferred the Unearthed Arcana version of this. Okay. And we'll get into it as I suppose we begin to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, but, the specifics of it, but yeah. both of these are still really good. And there's some unique abilities in the actual full release, which is really good still. I, I think I prefer this one from what I remember. I haven't gone back and looked at that original one, though, I will say. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, I just really like that this bard is... It, it, it's not like also... 
a spooky sneakman or like a psychic guy or like a, a knife thrower, sword yeah. swallower, or it's just a bud. And and they say like he doesn't have to be a musical thing, but I think this one still works very well if you wanted to be a music playing bard. And again, the only mu- directly music themed bard we've got is that one from a couple months ago that we oh. weren't super hot on. So, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Every now and again recently I've been because I, I, there's still quite a few classes I've not actually played in, in fifth uh, because you know there's <laughs> a lot and. Uh, <laughs> Every now and again, I'm like, oh, I'd like to play a druid, and we were talking about that the the star druid, the the, the from, from the other other month, and I really that's a really cool druid. Oh, I really like a druid, and I kind of want to try a barbarian every now and again. Now that this is like out, I just really want to have a bard. I just want to really want to play a bard and this bard, and I, I haven't been cl- playing cleric for a little bit, and it's cool. I like it, but I just like I, I just like bard more. I think I just really like bard, and now it's now it's what I wanted it to be from the start. <laughs> Because I, I I played the I I think I played a Valor Bard originally yeah uh, that's what it was yeah and it was fine it wasn't I, I liked that it wasn't like super meta really really good uh, I don't want to be rolling I don't, I don't care about rolling like huge damage and doing a hundred actions on a turn but sometimes like when you roll you like your inspiration die you give it to a guy and then they just never really need it I was like okay or they roll it and they get a one it's like uh, okay. I think that's that's one of like the kind of biggest memes about the bard is the bardic inspiration is like so it, you might just roll a one they might hit anyway yeah that's the thing yeah the big thing is like oh bardic inspiration oh I just rolled like an 18 so my I rolled like 25 to hit I don't need it like oh okay. I don't need it like, okay cool or like but there's the times where it does matter and that feels so good it is really awesome when it does work but the yeah. fact that you only get like up to five of them, and when you're twentieth level, you get one. Um, you get one as you go into combat. Nice, great. <laughs> it's it's a little difficult to guarantee that it's going to be useful. The bardic inspiration, uh, which isn't necessarily a problem, but it was just a little bit like nothing the bard has in like their basic kit, as it were, is like the best thing that they've got, as it were. Like you know, like counter charm. Has oh. anyone ever used counter charm? I don't think I've it. I, I imagine it's very good for like terrifying presence kind of a situation. I will tell you what, counter charm again. It is so situational that it's bad because it's an action, really. That's the, that's the thing. It's a full action. I think it's yeah. terrible because it's an action. But I've had in my Sunday campaign. Yeah. They're all undead, and he wrote a actual song. Okay. Yeah. That he played during the necromancer fight to stop them all being mind controlled. Okay. Okay. So they were all using their saves because they're all undead. The necromancer can control undead, sure, yeah. and it was so hype having the soundtrack be the song that this character wrote. Yeah, yeah. And that's his counter charm during the fight. So that's awesome, and that encompasses everything of why Bard is good. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so so much opportunity for awesome RP stuff. There's YouTube channels out there nowadays where uh, I'm not talking about the new thing of people, you know, how to make Darth Maul. Or t- no, but a lot of people right now are taking modern songs and turning them into medieval versions. There's a lot of bardcore. That is yeah. awesome, right? That's great. Yeah. But yeah. there was an, also another thing of people. Uh, I saw some of these on Twitter a while ago where people make just a song about a bit of their adventure in D&D and they yeah, upload yeah. and that's that's where the bard's great but none of the bards exactly what you said represented that I play an instrument or I talk oh, or I, I don't swing a sword it, it's good I'm, I'm very happy it's in the game um, and as we were saying actually of course when I first character ever made back in technically it was 3.5 we did not follow the rules but I, I played a bard and I wrote down I didn't write songs that was, that was too much work I just wrote down song names I would mm. read them out, but most of them are not safe for TV. We, we, we were edgy kids. We were teenagers, so they are stupid as hell. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have that document. I have it on my wall. I have it near me. At That's all beautiful. Times. And if I were to play a bard again, I would actually, I would do, I would do that again. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess we should probably talk about what this bard actually do. So, College of Eloquence, you're the master of the art of oratory. So persuasion, talking, your words is, is your is your weapon, of course. It is a specific point of having it be talking your way through things because of this first thing you get. So at third level, and this is pretty good for third level, I thought. This is very cool. I, I, it's, we'll, have, we'll have to talk about the balance of it, I suppose. But um, whenever you make a persuasion or a deception check, if you roll below 10, you can just say, nah, that was a 10. So you never are below average at persuading or deceiving. It's pretty good, especially when that combines with expertise and stuff. I mean, I'm obviously Ooh, on, my, true. on my bard yeah. at the moment, I've obviously got like plus 13 persuasion. And I've, I've, I've had that for a while as well. It's not even like... Yeah. So that would be like from... Always like, 23. At least 23. Mm, which means... All the time. Which is really, really good. Uh, the thing about this is... I, I'm, I'm thinking back to fourth right now. 
Because in fourth, it was pretty conceivable pretty quickly to get a plus, more than plus 20 to a skill. Yeah. Right? Were the DCs, like, way higher in fourth? Some of them were, yeah. Because that's, but the thing is, when you were, if you were, if you were specced in a skill, you would, like, blow everyone else out of the water. Like, there was, there wasn't, even if you rolled, like, a two with a plus 30 to bluff, you're still gonna beat everyone else. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. So, it was, it sometimes feels weird in fifth, when the numbers are a lot lower, to, to be the bard guy, but roll bad on persuasion, and then it's, someone yeah. with, with nothing like, in charisma, but then rolls high. I don't know, th- this gets rid of that issue. Yeah. So this is actually a, basically a, I think it's a 10th level rogue ability. Right, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. yes. It's reliable talent, which is um, basically the same, but for dexterity, acrobatic stuff. Yeah. If I remember, way back when the game was in playtest, when it was D&D Next. Oh, God, yeah, Next, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was totally a thing that I think everyone got okay. about their proficiencies. You see, that's kind of interesting. I kind of, I, I kind of like that. The way that I would, if this had a line where it was like, you can only do this equal to your charisma modifier per long rest, or you can only do this once per short rest. If it had anything like that attached to it, I would immediately be fine with it. The fact that mm. you can just do it when, like constantly is it, why it's bugging me, but maybe that's just a case of like, I'm worried of people like just like trying to- It sounds like a level 14 ability. I think trying to cheat with it too much. It sounds like it's level 14. Like imagine getting that as the 14th level ability and you would be fine. With- it's hard as a DM. If your PCs are trying to persuade people in in game they're trying to be persuasive with an argument and they really want it to happen and they say well I'll roll persuasion and they're like well there's mm, realistically there's no way they'd ever agree to this like insane thing you're saying but you've rolled good persuasion Th- this means that you're like, that's going to happen way too much right <laughs> if, if with this ability. I mean what's the point in rolling anymore honestly like, that, that, if it's that, 23s like that's minimum. the thing yeah like yeah when you get to like having you know if you've got like you know plus 4 charisma and then you're Proficiency modifiers are plus Why three. You make it proficient, like yeah, like how a, a DC twenty is really high in fifth, and you could get to there by you know level ten, which is obviously high level. I think a bit. I think even earlier than that. I think I was, maybe. Oh yeah, if you've got expertise, then definitely. Yeah, because I think yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. Like I think it was way earlier than that that I was having that high. Like, it was a yeah, lot, get expertise level five. Yeah, I, three, I really like this ability, but I I just. I'd have to see it like in play over like a, a couple years of someone playing this before. I, if the, if it was tied to a resource, I'd have no problem with it at all. I think that's the thing. Maybe if it was tied to your inspiration die, maybe if you mm. used your inspiration die to do it. I want to play okay. an. Av- I want to be an avocado for a second. Be the devil's avocado. Be Satan's avocado. There is nothing more infuriating in Dungeons and Dragons than actually talking to the NPC. Thinking about a reasonable argument, <laughs> saying everything correct, being impassioned, actually maybe trying really hard, and then rolling a four. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, yeah it's the uh, worst. Because then the only reason you're failing is they have to say, like, well, I guess you, like, fall over. I guess over. you fired. You fired. Right? <laughs> yeah. You in the middle of that, sorry. And yeah. so, taking that whole element away, basically what this says is your character isn't going to say something wrong. Sure. Because that's what it is. It's, it's, just, it's just putting you to average, as it were. But of course, you have proficiencies is the problem. But... Yeah, that moment is just so lackadaisical. Or oh, well, that moment where, in performance, where, like, your barge, you know, my whole thing is I play music, yeah. right? I do the things. I do, oh, yeah, I want to play some music for the tavern. Yeah. You walk mm-hmm. in there, and then you immediately crit fail. And it's like, well, I guess my whole class is nothing. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, it's pretty it's... funny when that happens, but yes, it is also... <laughs> Sometimes it's not appropriate for it to be... Yeah. Sometimes you're trying to do something. And, yeah, or just and, have a good time. Yeah, and it's like, well, I guess, I guess I break my guitar over my head. This is off topic, but this is kind of what we do on this show, and I think we're going to do this a lot on this one. Yeah, again, this video is probably an hour long. I think it comes to certain degree of, um, when should you ask for roles? Yeah, this is, right. that's, that's what I, I think that's what I've been trying to put in my head. It leads to the perils of the dice, and there's always like, oh, well, I give you advantage. Oh, he rolled two crit fail. Yeah, yeah. So you just you just did nothing, and the, especially when there's no real reason that you wouldn't do it at least medium. It's, especially when it comes to like downtime stuff. I, I get it if it's in the middle of like a stressful situation like combat. Like you should probably have to offer everything like that because in those situations you could fail because of you know the situation. But if it's like I'm gonna go play in the tavern, 
this is what you are a performer for. You're not get, unless your whole thing is you have like stage fright, and maybe that could be fun. That could but be like, fun. But, but, but that's like a low level thing. You don't want to be like tenth level like crit fail like ah. Well, I mean, and of course, like crit failing is not really a thing for checks technically, but like. You know, if you're the best bard in the world, you could, you're you you're such good at playing the guitar that lightning bolts shoot out of you sometimes. You playing an average tune is going to be pretty weird. I mean, I know it's not super logical, but having a 5% chance of catastrophically failing any time you do anything. <laughs> yeah, anything, yeah. I, don't, it's, I, don't stand I know it's a game. I understand that. And, like, you need to have chance. But it, <laughs> for certain things, it's very stupid. This is why I like this ability. I And I think, if what you were talking about earlier with the... If every class like at some point had something kind of like that, I feel like that actually is kind of interesting, and I would have I would have liked that to have been in fifth, I think, uh, especially yeah. if it's not combat stuff like yeah. stuff that you because uh, because why wouldn't the fighter always be able to be better at, at athletics than like I mean, the wizard like they surely they should. I've had that multiple times in mind. Yeah, so if someone knows history because their character has learnt it, why outside of like a stressful like trying to remember in the heat of the moment, why is trying to think about something or like consult your notes? Why is that? having such a high chance of failure. Yeah. I mean, there are feats for skills as well, right? Yeah, these days, yeah, like, yeah, that's true. you could take Historian and then be like, oh, well, I guess I, I just fail. <laughs> I know and, and it could be it could be really interesting if what we're talking about kind of is maybe if all those feats were this. Yeah, yeah, actually, you know, that's a really good point. I think that's quite fourth edition, actually. Like, yeah, yeah that's right, we get, oh, mm. maybe that was the plan along with fifth. We'll just make it fourth eventually. And they'll all love it. You all hated fourth for no real reason. Yeah, we've, like got, new we, we, we've got to stop being so pro fourth players. They're gonna burn down. <laughs> they can't burn down drawing Delvis HQ. I think before. Yeah. Um, sorry, this is complete rambling oh, again. No, but obviously, because I'm playing a bard at the moment, and I'm playing yeah, a, yeah. an edgy, an edgy bard. Mm. Before, uh, like in our campaign, before like the characters were kind of realizing what we were doing, I was probably angling for a more non combat bard. Right, right. But when I saw the, when I saw that your character was kind of doing that, and I was being edgy, <laughs> and that class that I'm playing is quite edgy, it's called your whispers, by the way. Yeah, I was like, it's I'm gonna roll psychic this. Psychic knives. It's been pretty fun. It's a bit. It's not it's exactly what I envisioned totally when I had the character because like when I first like set all my spells, I was like, I'm gonna have no combat spells. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah. But, yeah, uh, but you love Shatter. But I, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> it's good. I was like, well, I had one. I was like, well, I have one. Otherwise, I, I can't do anything. I mean, it yeah, ended up being fine, but yeah, yeah. Realistically, yeah, this class is definitely something that oh, I was looking at, and I, I just love it. It's really good. So I'm not gonna get any. You're not gonna get any hate from me today. We're not even complaining about this ability. We're talking about fifth edition. Mm. The complaints about this ability is just all this is doing is raising questions about the way skills work in fifth. There's probably plenty of DMs who don't make people roll for skills outside of combat. Anyway, that's Silver Tongue. That's the first thing you get at third level. Uh, <laughs> someone, someone tell me about unsettling words. The third, the other thing. <laughs> um, well, this is one where you can spend your bardic uh, inspiration on. And you can choose a creature in 60 feet. You can roll the inspiration die. And then that creature has to minus your roll from its next saving throw. Oh, so good. That it makes before the start of your next turn, which is amazing. So good. It's so strong. It's just better than all the other ones. Uh, the cutting words are still good. Cutting words is really good. Yeah. As a class where probably 90%, if not 95% of your offensive mm. spells are saves. Are yeah, safe yeah. spells. I don't have any roll to hit spells <laughs> on my bar. <laughs> They're all saves. Not even talking just about damaging spells, but you know, all the various, you know, like hideous laughters and your. Know, Crowns of madnesses and such. So good to the point where you might end up never using your bardic inspiration <laughs> on your allies. Like, I th that's a probably a legit, like, thing that might happen with this. Mm. Because, again, with spells in 5th edition, and probably every edition of d, &D with spells, it's really lame to to use a spell slot, and then it... Nothing happens. Especially when it's one that doesn't do damage. Yeah, it just, and it's just like, like, oh, okay. It just feels like, okay, cool, but, uh, see you in like 20 minutes when it's my turn again. I'll, I guess I'll try again. Stacking this with things like Bane. Yeah, oh, you can, mm. if you really want to get a guy with something. You can do like Vicious Mockery and Unsettling Words, so it's like my screen <laughs> saves and has disadvantage on its next attack. <laughs> yeah. So you're just like really attacking it. This is like the Skull, honestly. Like, yeah, with, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I want to say what originally... Oh, yeah, what was this originally? I don't remember. This was that they could cast Calm Emotions 
without expending a spell slot up to a number of times equal to their charisma. That's true. I do remember that. And I think that's a different kind of direction again. The the old one was very much, and this still is, obviously, we talked about it, yeah. very much even more of that pacifist angle. Uh, if you use calm emotions in a- any way other than literally trying to defuse a situation, then it's evil as hell. Because <laughs> yeah. you are calming right down <laughs> so you can stab him easier. And that's real evil. And obviously that's fine if you're, you know, that, that, you, know you can do that. But uh, it does, it, it, it means you have to be either using it Actually, possibly uh, pacifistly, which can put you in, uh, which might end up putting you in, in conflict with other players. Because if you are trying to defuse a situation and they just want to kill, want to do kill the hobgoblins, yeah, and you're like, no, we'll talk to them, then that, yeah. You know. And the the other thing you got at first, at third level, even hmm. is the level six ability we're going to get to. Oh yeah, was that was that was that at first? I mean, third. Even. Uh, yeah, universal speech was at third level. Oh right, sorry, not the okay, yeah, not yeah, this yeah, next yeah. one, but the next one. Yeah, because this one gets two at third, two at six. Yeah, which is pretty uh, good. Nice front loaded abilities. Really front loaded, yeah. Which right. again, Bard only has three uh, levels that they get their subclass stuff because they are a full caster, so they have to get those levels where they get nothing but a new spell slot. Yeah, and, and they get all of their generic Bard stuff, which yeah, is yeah, yeah, you, you get you get your counter charm. I think that's Song at six breath. as well. Song of Rest is a great, a great little bit. Inspiration, expertise, magical secrets. S- Song of Rest is weird when you're playing as the Sword Swallower. What does he do? Is he swallowing <laughs> swords <laughs> of rest? He's he's doing little, he puts on it. He puts on a little, little, little show that imbues yeah. people with healing. Uh, right, should I go through unfailing inspiration? Yeah, let me let me know the sixth level thing. So this essentially fixes bardic inspiration being a meme because <laughs> it. When you give someone a body inspiration dice and they use it on, you know, on their things like a to check and attack roll, sing through, and it fails, they keep the body inspiration die and can use it again until it does work. Passes. Yeah, that's just it's, it's just really good. It's, it's really good. And, and the thing is, I think the my initial thought was like, wow, it's really strong, and it's obviously very good. But if you think about like the amount, number of turns you get in D and D in in a combat, it might be three to four rounds. So it's not like. It, like if it fails like twice in a row, then that's still bad. Like it's not like oh, don't worry, it'll work eventually because it's still True. really suck. Because you need it to work in the moment. So yeah. when it's st- when it fails, it's st- it's not like it's still oh, no it's, it's, it's still not going to feel amazing. But the fact that it's not a lost resource, it's not just been lost to the ether for nothing. Exactly, I think would yeah. make it so much. You wouldn't feel so bad about it every yeah. single time it failed. Yeah, I think with these two things, you're going to be really thinking about your body considerations a lot more. Yeah, where, like yeah. especially like I think sometimes. Especially in like some of the combats we do, I'm mm. like, especially on my bard, I'm not always thinking about like chucking bardic inspirations all the time. If there's like something sp- particular mm. coming up, I'd be like, okay, maybe I might deploy one here. But now you yeah. could just be like, well, I know that, like, this character's going to try and do something a bit crazy at some point in the fight, so I'll give them one just right now. Yeah, I think it's really good. How long is is it concentration up to a minute inspiration? It, it, it's te- it's ten minutes. It's ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. So you could actually. Give one to each person. Yeah, if you wanted to. If you wanted everyone to be really on it for, like, an encounter. Yeah, yeah. And then they could just use it whenever they felt they needed. And to just say, uh, this was actually the 14th level of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this was a really good 14th level thing, when that was the thing. I was like, wow, that's great. It means your inspiration's, like, awesome. And the fact this is at 6th, I'm still like, whoa! But now I'm like, ah, this is awesome! <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... I was going to say, I think these are all 14th level abilities. That's, 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 that's the thing. But again, the 20th level bard thing is you get one use of your inspiration when you enter a fight. Like, who cares? It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Come on, Charm. Who, who needs it? Again, th- this is why I thought at first, I was like, I was worried this is a bit over much, a bit too OP. But like, the fact that, you know, it, it will eventually work might not be good enough. Like, the, it, there's plenty of fights where that's not... That's not gonna cut it. Like if you you might the chance of failing is still there, and it's still as high as it ever was. It's just you know eventually it's gonna work. But if everyone dies before it works, then that, that doesn't matter. Like I, I don't think it. I don't think it's too overpowered for that at all. It just means that you will actually, as you say, be more free with using them. I think, and and now with this really good. Unsettling words being so good, it'll be like a struggle to decide if you want to use it. To yeah, I think you're gonna be really conflicted. Like, I've got so many, I've got so many uses for my inspiration. You're gonna be spoiled for choice, especially when like someone's like par- you know like charmed or you know or, or like paralyzed, and you need to they need to make a save to like get out, and you give them that inspiration, and then they make the save, but then they they, they roll it and they still fail, and it's like, well, I use my thing, I did I did the thing I do to try and help you, and, and still fails. Yeah. It's like, uh, anyway. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, I could even imagine unfailing inspiration just being somebody's homebrew rule for what inspiration is. I was going to say, it's, to yeah. me, I would. I think that should just be something Bard has. A- again, this is just for me. This is just Bard. This whole yeah. class is subclass is just basic Bard. This is what the basic Bard is. It's all about that inspiration. This is buffing inspiration. Yeah, which none of the other ones really do. Yeah, I think outside of expertise, none of them have anything that boosts charisma or per- yeah. persuasion, deception, skills. Yeah. Mm. Outside of expertise, obviously. Yeah, which obviously, but that's just the ones that you choose. It doesn't. You can choose. Uh, whatever you, you can get, obviously, but mm. anyway. But yeah, this is when this was a 14th level thing. I thought it was a very good and like apt 14th level thing. A reason to actually get to 14th level in Bard, which I think it struggles because obviously you want to you want to get those two levels in Fighter uh, that everyone gets. <laughs> so, Got to get them at some point. Um, but yeah, this is like a reason to get up to that 14th level, and as well, this in, in, inadvertently buffs the 20th level thing. Because now it's buffing your, because <laughs> before it was you get an, when you were hit to twentieth level you get into a fight and you have one more d twelve but that's a d twelve that might just fail but now it's like guaranteeing a success eventually yeah which is so different that's so much better now like it has made that twentieth level thing not good but much better <laughs> anyway <laughs> less laughable <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I. I think that's pretty great. I, I think that it synergizes really well with just the the bard who runs in and because in D D, if you're playing it real, yeah, the players like there's often a lot of out of game talk that goes on between people, yeah, yeah. But there's also a lot that doesn't get said, right? Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. like you know because you're going turn to turn DM player, DM player, DM player, DM player, whatever. Yeah. You know you, they do their thing, they roll all that stuff, and you're thinking in your head what you're going to do, yeah. and. Yeah. I, I know the amount of times that I've thought of a plan of what's going to happen, <laughs> and, and then, it completely changes yeah. because of the character moved left. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. I guess I won't be casting right. that. I guess I will not be doing this thing. Yeah, you're sitting so there playing like, oh, wait, ahead, no, gone. <laughs> thinking ahead to what somebody needs inspiration for it's, this round, mm. it, it can be completely useless because of like, oh, I'm going to give you an inspiration die because you're on the front line, you're fighting, you might need it. And then it's like, oh, on his turn, he casts Shatter. Yeah, yeah. And he's just holding it. And then it's like, oh, okay. It doesn't get rid of that. I feel that maybe Bardic Expression should be refunded if it isn't used. That's if It feels so much like that, especially when you only really... You'll have five if you have 20 charisma, which you may well not have for like a good Because what life. does it actually represent? Yeah. Right, yeah, I get you. It's, 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 it's you are encouraging your allies to succeed with... Uh, either words or music or stories of great deeds and stuff like that. I, I, and that's... it can only work three times <laughs> per yeah, like, short you, 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 you get tired. Like, I've run out of stories, dude. Hang on. Yeah, one <laughs> second. Sorry, man. You you just heard, heard the story about Hercules. You have to wait a few. You have to wait a few hours before you think it's cool again. <laughs> Oh, it's like the side eye, you know, when we were looking at the psychics, how yeah, they can yeah. always be doing this psychic stuff, basically, because it's like chance to go away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I it feels so archaic now that it's like, oh, I get four cut, I get four body conspiracy die compared to, oh, I have infinite psychic energy. So long as I like, keep going on the risk reward. Uh, uh, what what I like about this as well, like this is all bonus action stuff because your body inspiration is a bonus action. So yes. like, you're still doing stuff. On your turn, it's not like it's a cleric. You're gonna cast bless on the guy to hope they make their save, and then they get a d4 and they roll a one because it's a d4 and they only roll ones. That's true. And they and they fail. It's like oh, I I did everything I could. And this is a bonus action, and then you can still cast spells. You can still make weapon attacks if you want. If you so have do you. Your crowd control stuff. Oh, the disgusting, unsettling words first turn to get a bane off on a guy. Oh, yeah. And then next turn using unsettling words and the bane effect to cast a, another spell off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's. I, I think that's that's just been real good. That's just been smashed. It's Especially just, you've got some other casters going on. It's a high IQ common. play. It's a high IQ. Like, what? Well, that's effectively like minus a D10. Minimum of minus oh. two is still good. Especially when the numbers are lower in fifth. Like, you know, the difference between a DC 15 and DC, DC 20 is huge. It's astronomical. Yeah. Absolutely ginormous. Players will be meeting DC 15s at some point consistently, but they won't be meeting DC 20s for a long time. Yeah, that's like dragon breaths and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, your character could never pass a dragon. Yeah, player. yeah. We were looking at my my cleric has a, a figure three dex three in dexterity, 
yeah. and thus can never, ever, ever pass any dragon breath. I think you pass the one once if I crit. <laughs> but he has to get like a 17 for young ones. Anyway, uh, I guess if there's a Paladin with their aura. That's actually a, com- a comparable thing, right? Paladin auras. Getting your charisma to all your saves. Mm. That's ridiculously good. And you get that at like a similar level to this. And it doesn't turn off. And it doesn't turn off. So I feel like this is just kind of putting more like a... Maybe not even level pegging with the Paladin for that. I know like they like to put like, you know, classes in like a power ranking and stuff. And I know bars sure, tend to go yeah. quite low in that. And I'm not sure, you know, how... You know, cause how, it it's, all, but it's all it's all it's all how well, like someone plays the character, plays the class yeah. and stuff. But yeah. I think this is definitely I have seen it, this is like super overpowered. I think it's just bringing it. It's just bringing it in, in line. Yeah. I think it's bringing it in line to some of the more powerful classes in the in the game. To be honest, definitely. To talk about the thou shalt not be named critical role. Yeah. I've been. I'm now on like. I'm. I'm in there. I'm in like. Oh, you've been watching it. Yeah. I'm on like. Yeah, episode, you're watching season I'm two. Watching I, season two and I'm like thirty <laughs> slang episodes in. I just watched the narrative telephones because they're very amusing. To talk about. Season one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Undoubted MVP is their bard. Sure, yeah. And it's his first time playing D and D. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So when people talk about like power rankings of classes, mm. I feel that people who do that don't play D and D. Yeah, I know that but... sounds mean. <laughs> I don't think they actually do. That's why I threw it kind of liberally out there. I know it's not. Yeah. It's not something I necessarily subscribe to. I think. The, I think the only thing that like would push the bard a little bit lower it's probably the same thing that that and the sorcerer have with like the limited spell pool that's true yeah but again bards get the the, the hidden lore and stuff that's a choice yeah i mean there's there's yeah. way there's ways around it and like obviously source can meta magic and stuff i really like the bard spell list as well it's uh, a good but it's a good spell list i, I, I miss agree. a lot of awesome stuff that's on there than playing cleric it's like there's a lot of great stuff in cleric as well but like I miss that. The unique colors. stuff to you isn't quite the stuff that you want. Exactly, yeah. I, 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 when I was making an NPC so long ago, for the first time I actually ran like a, a big campaign, I it's the first time I'd looked at the bard for ages, and I was making an NPC bard, and it was the most fun I had making any NPC, was making that one guy. <laughs> and like looking at his spell list and what it would be, it's like, it was real fun. Just want to play this guy. Yeah. I want to say one last thing on this, because okay, sure, it sure. plays into this, sure. is that... There are four classes in D and D that are charisma based. That yeah. is true, actually. Yeah. Why? Oh, don't, I mean, that's, why is so few? Why, so they... why is int so useless? <laughs> <laughs> the the only reason spellcastings are tied the way they are is because they've always been that way. Mm. And well, and all all those four, they tie them to personality. Is usually what it is, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. It will. This is Prison you doing it. I feel that that has made some of these things suffer because of. They've had to divvy up abilities. Sure, yeah, yeah. Those ones again, like auras used to be a bard thing in fourth. Auras feel so. I mean, in MMOs that have bards, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they are. They play music, mm-hmm. and the whole raid hears it and gets buffs. Exactly, yeah. right. It it feels like an auto include almost mm-hmm. to have the bard strum a guitar and everyone hear it and get plus three to their save. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I feel Counter Charm is trying to not be an aura. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> really it desperately isn't an aura, guys. Don't worry about it. The fact that, that it's just the fact that Warlock can't be in, intelligence based, I feel is weird because that, that feels like it should be so, so obvious. And I'm like, why can't a paladin be a wisdom paladin? Like, Yeah, like the green paladin. And, and I don't think. I think we talked about this ages ago with the the in the the clockwork sorcerer guy. Like, why is that not an intelligence sorcerer? But it, yeah. like, I don't think there's anything game breaking about changing any of the spell like ability using things. I, I'm gonna say it. Read the description of this one and say why this can't be an int bard. Yeah. I mean, adherents of the eloquence master the art of oratory. These bards wield logic and theatrical wordplay, winning over skeptics and detractors of logical argument. I mean, that that sounds sounds like they got a pretty big brain. Sounds like a big brain boy over here. I mean, when I played mine, yeah, I made Doctor Who. You did make Doctor Who. You did make Doctor Who. It's pretty great, right? And it was so fun because Doctor Who just walks around talking all the time. <laughs> like, all of the police don't hit me because we can't afford to do any action because it's the BBC. <laughs> I have to lowball int, and it didn't feel it right. Didn't, yeah, it just feels weird. Yeah. Okay, let, let's go on to universal speech. So you used to get us at third level, you say, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go through this, actually, because this is the, the one that's the most near and dear to me. Um, so what the official release version uh-huh. is that you can choose one or more creatures within 60 feet of you 
equal to your charisma modifier. Mm -hmm. And those chosen creatures can magically understand you regardless of whatever languages they speak for one hour, yeah. which is awesome. And once you use this feature, you can't do it again till long rest or unless you spend a spell slot, any spell slot. Okay, okay. So your character can just talk to groups. Yeah, and it's up to so one to five things, essentially. Yeah, but you could just spend a first level. Yeah, and by si even by sixth level, you do have a decent amount of first level spell slots. You probably have like four by then, I think, right? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great. And, um... The old version tied this to inspiration as well. Ah, uh, okay. That you oh, rolled so inspiration that die, and it was the number of creatures was equal to the number you rolled. Oh yeah, I remember that. Really, sort of unnecessary. I feel. Mm. And you also gained advantage on charisma checks made to influence them. Okay, so that, that, that's kind of yeah, like that's interesting. It's a lot in one thing, though. I feel. And it also said that the creatures, explicitly that the creatures do not require a language. Ah. Now this one is more, I was wondering about that when you were reading it, actually, looking at it now. I'm wondering if it does, because it's not explicit about that here, but it doesn't say, mm. like, if they have a language, which is, I think, a lot of, like, the tongues and comprehend languages often have yeah. that line like that in there. So I think this one you still can use it, but again, having it not explicit so. is a, perhaps that's a choice to leave it in the hands of the DM. Yeah, universal speech is just fun. Being able to speak to anything is such a big thing. Probably going up around the time of this is more episodes of... Yeah, the uh, illustrated account. Yeah, Where we, where we struggle account. to talk to anything. Yeah, I We think, struggle to talk to so much I, for I so think long. Actually, the, uh, the episodes that will be up currently are the ones where it really dawned uh, that you guys are going to need to get some languages. I was actually talking to Raj about this the other the other day. Because he, he was saying that like apparently... It's generally considered that feats like linguist are weak because everything speaks common. I don't like that. I think it's stupid that everything speaks common. <laughs> so I just, I just don't have that. I think there's probably a lot of DMs who do that. So I think, I think languages are really important uh, personally, and I think they should be. So this is a cool ability. Anyway, yeah, definitely a cool ability. Very flavorful for uh, the talking to anything, telling the wolves that you know maybe. They're not speaking back, but telling them to leave us alone and there's, we'll give you some of our food. Or, the, or there's better prey that's less armed in that direction. Yeah. Maybe a complete lie, but then you've got that God, automatic talking. 10 on that bluff. Yeah. And then, you know, plus whatever it is at this level, probably like plus 7, plus 6 maybe. It's a good ability. Again, you got it at level 3 before, but it was tied to inspiration. I, I think that's too weird. That's just too... That, that way that that ability worked was pointlessly complicated. Because you're not necessarily going to want to use it on more than one creature anyway. Like, you don't need to... Like, like what difference does it make if you get a one or a six on the, the, the roll for how many creatures? Mm. Like, that just feels weird. Because if it's a large group of them, then it doesn't matter because you're not going to get all of them anyway. And you're just going to want to talk to, like, a figurehead one because that's how D&D &D works. You talk to the leader of any small group because the DM doesn't want to have to do, like, 25 different people talking. This is a much simpler and and just better way of this ability to work. And it's functionally, like, identical, I think, as well. Definitely, yeah. And it replaces the old level 6 ability, which uh, was that you could use your bardic inspiration die to deal psychic damage or to heal. Oh, really? I don't even remember that. Okay. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. So it was kind of like, eh, no, that's a good change. Get rid of that one. Yeah, I, I care not for that. Because that's weird, because that version of that class, A, is more pacifistic in general, because it had that calm emotions, but then also, oh, you can do psychic damage. They're on a psychic damage kick for a good, like, year, where every <laughs> class had, like, oh, by the way, do psychic damage as well. Like, eh? Do I? Sure. <laughs> I can see that. And it felt like it came up a lot. Maybe that's not true, but. Well, look, I think there's a lot of stuff trying to, like, again, trying to make int more of a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, and high concept classes where it's just like, oh, yeah, it'll do psychic damage because of how scary your lycanthrope barbarianness is, or like you're driving them mad. It's like, eh? Okay. Am I? <laughs> Am I driving them mad by hitting them with my tail? What? Anyway, I still love that barbarian, so I'm not gonna not gonna rag on it too much. I, I think it's a good sign when you can look at any ability in a subclass and it doesn't make you go, huh? Oh? Like, there's a couple mm. of... Usually there's one thing in each subclass that we go like, I don't get that. That's, I don't really understand. Um, but but it's whatever. But this one, I think everything makes a lot of sense. So, nice. Uh, infectious Inspiration, your final thing at level 14. I feel like that's relatively low for a keystone ability in a subclass. I feel like they're generally, like, 17. 
for a lot of classes. I feel like Bard, but, but again, Bard only gets the three. Bards are quite low. It's the same in my subclass of my Bard. So yeah, when you when you do when you successfully inspire someone, so after the after five turns of them rolling one on their d12 or whatever for inspiration, they finally do pass. The power of your eloquence can now spread to someone else. So basically, another creature within sixty feet of you adds a, a bardic inspiration die to their to a check, attack roll, or saving throw, which I think is just the basic things that a bardic inspiration die can do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is, yeah. When someone succeeds, you can use your reaction to give another creature a bardic inspiration die without using your resource. So this is crazy. Crazy good, obviously. Uh, you yeah. can you can you you can only use this reaction equal to your charisma modifier. Basically I guess this is doubling the uses of your bardic inspiration die, in a way. Uh, because they're both tied to your charisma modifier. So if you have plus five charisma, you have five inspiration die, and then when it succeeds, you can get another one for free five more times, as it were. So you have ten, effectively. Mm. Now, the chances of you actually doing in combat ten... Um, <laughs> but then, if you've got a big party, if you've got five guys in your party and you all inspired it as you're going into the fight, and they all use them, you could use yeah. you, you could in theory use them all up in one go, which would be crazy. But you get them back on a short rest, so you know. Yeah. Not only would it be hype just because your bardic inspiration die has actually succeeded, it means you're getting another one, which is like the opposite of a death spiral, I suppose. It's a wind spiral. <laughs> yeah, 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 and it's a reaction, which means mm. that you could spend that first round bonus actioning one out, yeah, and then theoretically be using your bonus action for something else on your turns, handing out inspiration by reactioning it around the group. That's true, actually, yeah. You might only have to do one at the start of the fight, and if it's rolling well, then you just keep handing it around. <laughs> That'd be really cool. Because then you can, that's completely true. You can be unsettling words with your bonus action, spending your inspiration, mm. and using your free ones, jumping them around the party. It's basically making it a separate resource, but not in like a super, super complicated way. I will say that the only thing about that, these five uses only, or however many, this... Uh, only recharge on a long rest, which I think is, uh, yeah, but Bardic Inspiration is always short, I think. Yes, yes. Or it becomes right. a short at like a certain level or something. But, you know, that's the same with your spell slots and stuff. And Yeah. So long as you keep, keep the, however you keep your resources tracked, uh, it shouldn't be a big problem. And it's a, it's a good 14th level ability, again, I think. It's it's not super, super, super strong, um, I don't think. With the way that rounds work, it's only really going to be like an extra, like, maybe two uses of it, maybe. It frees you up to use the other very good use of your Bardic Inspiration die with the uh, uh, with the unsettling words. I think this is definitely a bard to take to 14th level, and I would, hey, I'd, this is the only bard I'd take to 20th level, <laughs> as well, if, I, if, if I have my druthers. I don't think he needs to multi-class. No, that's that's the thing, yeah, because their because their base mechanic is now good, like really good. So you don't have to rely on having like action surge for that two levels in fighter or like <laughs> smite, or any, you know. So yeah, this is a great bard. I think uh, we've all, I think we've thoroughly said it's good. No surprises there. So it's good for about an hour. About an hour. We've been saying it's good. Uh, this is this is what I drew. Um, again, as I say, I wanted to have a, a dwarf with with a. A, hill, a mountain dwarf, so he's got medium armor. He's got brist, brist plate, and he's got a hurdy gurdy because it's the best instrument ever. A hurdy gurdy is pretty good. Name a better instrument. Oh wait, you can't. Uh, exactly. I think it's a good bard instrument as well, just because it's kind of, it's got it's it's sort of like a one man band thing, but not so fragile. Like it's not it's not like having a big drum on your back and a guitar and like levers and pulleys, but it it can have a if you are like a solo act bard, which a lot of bards probably are. Then it's some it's an instrument that can have a lot of depth for one performer, and then you can sing mm. as well. Unlike you know, like a, if you just got like a lute, then there's always going to be a certain amount of I'm just one guy with a lute. Of course, when you get to you know animate objects and stuff as a wizard or as a magic person, even you can have like a whole magical band and all this. But you know, hey, good tip and for role playing. Mm. Uh, awesome, I, I think racial species wise, these are awesome half elf. Diplomati kind of characters because half of them are often renowned for being, you know, diplomatic kind of travelers yeah. and not not, not necessarily fitting in anywhere course. but wandering around, which is very bardy. Anywho, but yeah, bard of eloquence, good bard, good bard, good class, but bard, good class. Finally, again, I like that druid. I kind of want to play that druid, but I think I might just make a cool NPC who's that druid, and I want to play this bard more than any class. I would 
honestly have no problem if somebody wanted to replace some of their base bard abilities with the some of these it's, abilities. Yeah. Did we talked about before an item that gives that just gives abilities that are like like this as well would be totally reasonable. Give give your bard a magic guitar that has the infectious inspiration or the unfailing inspiration on it. That'd be very cool. That's that's really that cool. That is really cool. Or a, a a book of epic poetry that covers the universal speech stuff, or, or you know something yeah. like. Yeah, well, I think silver tongue tied to a resource, or maybe like t- maybe like with like the belt of dwarven kind, you know, where it gives advantage. Oh, yeah. Like silver tongue, just like always oh, at least a ten on against with certain like types of people. I think that could be cool. Mm. Belt of mankind is pl- is flat ten on any persuasion attempts on a human. <laughs> Bit of mankind such a powerful. There's no point in persuading people. humans though, because they have ne- they never have any power in D and D. They're always just peasants. No. Anyway, <laughs> it's a lovely filth. <laughs> 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 oh yes. God damn it! I guess we're probably done, right? It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Theros is worth it for these two classes, especially this. Ooh, I was about to say something that might be. Yeah, this is my favourite class and subclass now in, in the hey, fifth. It, it made a commitment. Because I really like a couple love fighters. It. I like Battle Master. I like Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, I think I'd love to see Monster Hunter, the, the fighter class reworked now that because it's so old and it feels mm. it. Like it needs a little bit of something. Okay, cool. This is the end of this video. If you like... Bard if, man good. If you liked this bard, why don't you go... Uh, buy the book or do the survey of the last of uh, the the survey is up I believe for the uh, the previous Unearthed Arcana which I th- oh, what was it, it didn't was, have uh, this part of it but it was it was a good one it was the it was the uh, the revisited. it was the yeah, it was the revisited it was the rogue phantom and it was the genie warlock revisited and it was the artifice it was a good one so go check out that uh, survey I'll probably put a link to that in the description as well and you know what. Learn to play the hurdy gurdy. Go, go yeah. pick up a hurdy gurdy. I'm sure they're incredibly expensive. Let's make them. Like, oh god, they are. They're really expensive. Because they're like very complicated, and I imagine they're not mass produced. No. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos <laughs> and all that. Nice. I guess. Just slot in that call to action in like the one hour five minute mark. If this is the if this is the last video, I think this is a, a good one because it's just the bard is good now. D and D is done. <laughs>